All right, we're back again for another video with Mark from Moz Customs. Just a quick uh, disclaimer here, but the last video we did with the nose repair came to an abrupt end because uh, yeah, unfortunately I wasn't here on the day when it was painted. So we thought we would continue that theme and we're gonna show you how to paint a board once you've finished the repair. So over to you, Mark. All right, so yeah, thanks, Paul. Um, so what we've done here is we've uh, got a very, very minor repair on a board that, and I've, I've deliberately left it at the same stage as what we left that last board at. Um, so from, you probably remember from the last video, primer, um, which you can see on the board is like a beigey color. Um, primer and then a putty after the primer to fill up any tiny little pinholes or scratches. However, those two can be one step if you buy primer filler or high build primer um, or spray putty. They're all different names for something that's just thicker. These are all exactly the same ingredient. It's just varying thicknesses. Um, that, that is just paint without all the thinners and stuff in it really. And it just bogs up all the tiny little holes. Um, I prefer this because putting that blade putty on um, with a, like a spatula, it forces it into the little holes and I find it works better than, than a high build primer. So I do it in two steps, but if you want to save money, just buy a can of high build primer. Um, obviously wet sanding, we showed that before. Um, I'm gonna use a 240 grade just to take the, the real chunky bits of the filler off and then a 400 to get a really nice smooth finish um, later on. And then when I prime it a bit more heavily, I'll do 400 again. Um, after that, same as any time you're painting anything, cleanliness, cleanliness, you don't want wax, grease, oils, any, anything like that, anywhere near the board. Um, and because that's what makes your paint end up with fish eyes or little holes and things like that in it. Right, so we will get to work with the basic sanding first. So with 240, and as I said, just, just to get the most of the, the chunky bits off. We're trying not to hack into our repair. We're trying to just, just take a little bit of that filler off. Well, what we're trying to do is remove all of the filler except what's in the holes, basically. So. And remembering it's round, so if we keep doing all of this way, we're just gonna end up with a whole bunch of flats. So we do still need to go around the rail. feel to make sure that we've got a nice curve there. Now you can see where I've primed here and here where there's no filler. You think that's flat. It's not until you start doing this and you realise all of those are low points. They might only be low by a quarter of a millimetre or not even but um, that on a gloss paint job particularly is the tiny little thing that makes it makes it look you know makes it look bumpy um, and then much like the last one use use the curves of your hands to you know we're using the block to make sure that we've got it real straight but then a little bit of the curve of your hand just to make sure we've got that lovely curve there done nicely um, if I was using uh, primer filler, as I said before, I would probably stop with that sanding at 240 um, because it fills far more significant size scratches. But because I'm using primer surface, so it's a little bit thinner, um, just to be safe, I'll give it a bit of a touch with 400.
Right, so after our repair, that's the first step for painting. Our first step basically is that we want to fill any little tiny um, holes and scratches. You want to see uh, the insides of the board with a few dobs of filler on it, a little bit of primer on top of it. All those little patches are just where there was, all those little patches are just where there was a low point. And you can imagine if you did paint that, you'd see all those tiny little holes. So, then as I said, cleanliness, lots and lots and lots of cleanliness at every single step. Wax and grease remover, because even though it was clean before, I've now touched it with my hands. You, you've got oils in your skin um, and that can be enough sometimes so just worth giving it a quick rub with the wax and grease remover at every stage so now we'll just mask it up again and spray it um, we'll be back in a couple of minutes okay and as uh, we're just going to prime this again to get it ready for proper paint um, and as I said on the previous video don't mask right up to the uh, the non-slip if you don't have to so we only want to cover our repair with primer and if you mask all the way up to that uh, non-slip, you're just creating a task for yourself later um, with with sanding into the non-slip and ruining that area. Um, oops. And we can use newspaper and all sorts, but a nice small repair. So what are we spraying here? We've got... Well, I should have shook it up first so we don't waste a minute. The prime, oh, okay. primer prime. surfacer. Okay, yep. And now that we've filled all those little holes, we're going to get a much better result than we had before. Um, and a couple of coats of that. Um, not one heavy one. A couple of slightly lighter coats. Just looking at the tiny little pinholes that I think they're bubbles in the paint, so we'll keep going. I don't know, can you see that? Oh, it's... it's... Oh, yeah. Little bubbles in the paint, but we'll be right. And I don't know if you can see that. There's a little bit of a texture to it. Um, Little bit of orange peely, a few drips because spray cans are awful compared to a spray gun. Mm -hmm. And we'll cover that when we paint properly. But um, this is why spray guns are lovely. But for the purposes of priming, it doesn't really matter that that cheap product has put a few lumps and bumps on it because we're going to sand that off a little bit later. All right, so we've had the board in the sun for a little while with this uh, nice uh, primer coat that we've done. Now, reminder, as I said, not going all the way up to the uh, to the non-slip. If I paint over this now, you will see that edge for sure. So the first thing I do is with 400, I work on that edge and only on that edge, only on that edge to get it blended in nice. And if you can't feel it, you're probably not gonna see it. Right, so what I've done is just work on that edge so it's blended in and then on the two ends just a little bit to make sure there's no big dobs of paint and then into 400 over all of it and we're trying to not take the primer off we're just getting it nice and flat so. Okay, we've rubbed that back with 400. As you can see, we've got a lovely smooth result and I hope this shows on the video. Right there is one that we missed with that filler. Yep, you can know see it. Yep. So if we paint it over that, I, I think I'll be quite confident that you would see it. So unfortunately, we're going back to the fill step just briefly. Um, but that's why this stuff is really good fast drying um, that'll be good to go in about 15 minutes in this nice warm summer temperature 
another 15 minutes, we can sand that back again and hopefully we'll be good to go. All right, just filled that little extra bit that we had. Sanded back with uh, 240 very gently and then 400 again and I think we've got that little chip. Then as I said previously, cleanliness, cleanliness, um, I would be pretty confident that we can paint this now but you know, why risk it? Wax and grease remover again. And I'll go a bit further past the repair too because we're gonna try and spray a little bit past it so we can cover it better. And this time we'll be masking right up to the non-slip line. Hoping it's not still too wet. You know, for the purposes of the video, I'm expediting a couple of things. If I should probably let this dry a little bit more so the tape sticks well, but nice warm day and hope for the best. Roddy, near enough for a masking job. Um, now as to painting, um, for the most professional result, as you would have seen in the last video, spray gun. Um, I use an HVLP gun, which is modern technology, high volume, low pressure, um, and this will give you a beautiful result. 1.3 mil tip, which is a little bit smaller than you use for painting cars, 1.3 mil tip means that I can get a nice fan about that wide for painting a whole board, but I can also turn it right down to about that wide for painting small areas. It's a really good dual use gun. However, a good gun's gonna cost you upwards of $200, and, and I do mean that as a starting point. Um, really, really good gun, 600 bucks. We're not doing that. We're trying to do something that the average person can do, which means spray cans. And I was going to show you a little tip with spray cans. What makes a really good spray pattern is the atomization of the paint. It's the tiny, tiny little droplets being spread out evenly. And what creates atomization with that is the compressed air from your compressor. You can turn the pressure up. You can put more thinners in your paint. Um, you can change the amount of fluid that's coming out of the tip. And all of those will give you a different spray pattern. You can't do any of that with this. Right? So, with a, with a spray can, a really good tip, warm water. Um, this is probably about 50 or 60 degrees. Don't go past that, we don't want to blow ourselves up. But a nice warm can, and I'm hoping to show you the difference between a half full can, so the pressure is down a bit, and also it's just room temperature, and a brand new can that's been warmed, we've got a bit more pressure and we should get a much better spray pattern. Um, I hope so. So on here, hopefully, hopefully we can see the difference here. If we run with a half full can, uh, it's been used, not warmed up. I'll start again because you can see, you see it's a bit sputtery. Um, it's throwing some big drops here, do a darker area. The spray pattern's only that wide and it's kind of throwing a few big drops and you can even see the big drops it's throwing on the can there. Mm -hmm. um, 
brand new can full. We can hear the difference, you can hear the pressure. Oh, I, hope on the, I hope that comes through on the video because you can really hear the increased pressure and see it's putting more paint on, um, but a finer, uh, the droplets are smaller. Now, I've got a flat white here because we've got a matte finish. Whites are very, very difficult to match. Anyone who's painted a whiteboard will know. There's everything from a kind of a creamy white through to greyish whites, and they're never quite right. However, a flat, a flat white, um, most of them are fairly pure white. I was going to mention for a gloss white on most boards, you probably want to use what's called appliance white. It's designed to match fridges and washing machines and that. That's probably going to be the, the whitest white that you're going to get. Appliance white from the hardware store is, is really good for gloss white on boards normally. But of course, they still vary. So, little light coats. So a light coat is just covering the repair no further um, because we're going to try and put minimal paint up here to try and get a bit of a fade. You can't fade out your paint job and have it invisible like you can with a spray, uh, with a spray gun, but with a can you can at least put a bit more paint on the repair and a bit less out on the perimeter here. And the other thing I'm going to do is because the logo is uh, is under the is under the paint with a bit of sand back. I'm going to try and fade out about there because it kind of hides the border if we go to that point. Then I'm going to come in at an angle. So I'm putting a lot more paint here and a lot less here trying to throw it out uh, very thinly where that logo is. And then the same the other way. I'm quite a, quite a distance away now. Now, if you come up, Paul, this is a good example too. You can see where we haven't filled. Um, so there's a couple of little pinholes. Our repair's all the way back here. Um, and there's a couple of little you know, dents and scratches that we didn't fill. And then hopefully you can see where the paint kind of fades out to nothing. You'll also notice it's really glossy at the moment. The reason it's glossy is because it's, it's still full of thinners. How most flat paints work is it's got a bit of talc in it that will rise to the surface and create that matte effect. So this will, whilst it looks glossy now, it will flatten off as it dries. So we'll give it a little while to dry, bung it in the sun and come back and see how we've done. All right, I've let the paint go off a little bit such that it's not going to run. Um, if you lift it too early, um, you can pull some of the paint away. I find if you lift it too late, you can also tear that edge. So I've let the paint kind of half go off. It's, um, it's at the point now where, touching the tape, of course, not the repair. Um, yeah, it, it, it's tacky, but it's not really coming away. Not coming away on my finger, so. We've still got a little bit of glossiness there. In fact, hopefully you can see it. It's still glossy in the middle where the paint's nice and heavy, but it's already started to flatten off where the paint's a bit thinner. Um, I think we'll have a pretty decent result there for something that's come out of a, a hardware store spray can. What are you doing? We've given this a little bit of a bake in the sun. A couple of things worth mentioning. As I said, um, fading out with a spray can is not that easy. We're lucky that with that flat white, it's, it's a pretty good match. Um, faded it out around about the logo here because that kind of hides it. So that's under the paint anyway. 
and then faded it out up here. Yeah, you know, we can see that because we did it, but I think most people probably would have spotted if they didn't know. One thing I was going to mention is this is the same colour all the way around, so I didn't mask along the bottom. And I've, because our repair only came to about here, just below the apex of the rail, painting the way I did is, is fading it out at the bottom there anyway. So with any other board, you know, you might want to mask along there if your bottom's a different colour, obviously, because spraying up here will still throw a little bit, a little bit underneath. But that's achieved our fade out at the bottom. Um, so a nice result for just out of a cheapy um, spray can from the hardware store. Now, speaking of fading out, people were um, asking on the other video about how I faded out the spray job on the bottom, which was a flat white as well. Now, I sprayed it with a flat white two-pack, um, which is a two-part polyurethane-like car paint, very, very hard, um, uh, as in sets very hard, very durable, but unbelievably poisonous. So we're not going to we're not going to cover that in board repairs that uh, yeah, people can do easily. However, talking about the fade out, if you are spraying paint, what I'd done on that board was I'd sprayed with a fan about six to eight inches wide. Uh, the repair was there, and I'd sprayed to about there. Once I'd sprayed that, then very, very lightly on the perimeter, so there's more paint thickness here and less there. Then where the fade comes is tipped out most of the paint so there was only a tiny bit of paint in the bottom, let's say 30 mils. And then I put about 40 or 50 mils of thinners in there. So we've thinned out the paint to a ridiculous amount. Don't forget when you do that, spray it on something else first because there's still paint in here. So we get rid of the paint in here and you'll suddenly see it get a lot lighter when it's drawing the, the stuff in there which is overly thinned. Then the overly thinned stuff, where my perimeter is, spraying the overly thin stuff and then again like I did here coming back and throwing it at a bit of an angle then that's probably enough fade if you've got a really good paint match so you've got good solid paint there a little bit thinner here and then here paint mixed with way too much thinners probably 50-50 um, if you want to take it a bit further or your match is not quite so good, you can then throw half that mix out again and thin it again. So we're now down to about probably only 25% paint at the most and give it another blow over. Um, that is more than enough to fade out on a windsurfing board. If you're doing a car, you'd buy special fade out thinners and all kinds of stuff like that. But the normal thinners that you use with your normal paint system will be enough. Um, the other tip too, is when I painted to about here on that other board, there was a logo over here. I masked that logo. We're not spraying anywhere near it. But when you are starting to fade out and you're starting to throw the paint at a bit of an angle, you will still get a little bit of overspray up here. So masking on those logos, even though you think they're a long way away, and that'll save you a lot of grief.